believers all over the world. We are so glad you could join us, as it's always our privilege to encourage you in the Word of God. So like, share, and let everyone know we're on the air. for transformation. So whenever you it's revealing to your mind who you are in God, who God is in you, then you'll have a transformation of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and you'll grab a hold to the word and say, wait a minute, there's greater in he that is in me than he that is in this world. And so therefore, I can have victory. I can't say, devil, this means war. Now you need to understand one thing. Everything you need has already been provided. The enemy don't want you to see that. And I hear God saying, if you want it, come and get it. Because he provided everything you need in heaven. That's why Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Everything that you need has been provided. Oh, nothing to say, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you want God to turn your husband around, what you waiting for? Grab a hold to the horns of the other side of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every time I lay my hands on his head, you transform his mind. Welcome, believers all over the world. This is Tim and Vicki, and you are tuned in to Hear and Be Healed. Guess what? Look <laughs> who's back. I want y'all to put, send out the likes, the hearts, and let everybody and Just let her know you're glad to have her back with us today. I, I'm glad to have her back. I need some help. Uh, so it's, it's kind of always feeling lonely on the set. But it's good to have her back. And so just send out those hearts and likes. Let me see them hearts. I don't see no hearts and no likes. Send out the hearts and likes. Let them know that you're glad to have her back. Listen, oh. we got a wonderful teaching today. You don't want to miss it. You want to stay to the very end. If you can't stay to the very end, you want to come back and review it. Uh, we're going to take an extension for what we taught last Sunday. Uh, we're talking about writing a vision down, having a plan. And so uh, I want to be hands-on tonight. <laughs> and after, after that teaching... Uh, I kind of walked away, you know, I always, I, I, after I do a teaching, I always meditate on what I could have did better. Did I do everything, you know, share everything the Lord wanted me to share? And one of the things that kept impressing on my heart is that, you know, nine times out of ten when we teach, people just hear. You teach, people just hear. And God didn't want me to let it go at that, where I just taught about, you know, the vision. He wants me to hold you accountable. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an exercise, a hands-on. It's going to be more hands-on tonight. We're going to take this thing a little further. And the title of the teaching tonight is called Write It Down. Write it down. So we're going to, so he, you said, okay. take the vision, write it, write it down, make it plain. So we're going to write it down and make it plain. I'm going to do some things. I'm going to talk about some things. So I want you to stick with us to the end, okay? I want you to come back. And oh, we want you to give us a little bit more time because... Today is first Sunday, and we're going to celebrate breaking bread together with the Lord's communion. And so we'll just give us a little time, and we're going to break bread together. So uh, what you can do while we go through these announcements that, we're, that are about to come up, run and get you something that you can get. If you don't have your communion, we, um, you can get those from our store. Uh, you'll find it out in the announcements. But if you don't have anything right now, you can go find something to substitute for the Lord's body and his blood, and we're going to break bread together at the end of this here and solidify the things that we're going to learn tonight. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Amen. Right. So Amen. we'll see you after these announcements. Get connected. Have you recently joined our broadcast? Maybe you've just started tuning in but don't know the next steps. Whether you're new or have been with us for a while, you may not know all the ways you can connect with us to stay up to date with what's going on in the ministry. Here are just a few ways you can get connected. Connect with us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash T-B-O-B-I-C Houston. Here you can like and follow us to get all future notifications. Just click the like button, then the three dots to the right to follow. Yes, we are on YouTube, where all of our messages are stored free for all to enjoy. Just search for The Body of Believers in Christ. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get your notifications when we drop fresh manna from heaven. Last but not least, you can find us on the web at www.tbobic.org. Here you can find out more about us, who we are, and what we believe. You can also get the opportunity to get connected by becoming an online member by registering online. Just know that we're here for you in more ways than one. 
While visiting online, stop by our online store, your one-stop destination for quality, inspirational resources and wisdom tools to help keep your faith alive and your spirit energized. Shop from our large online selection of books on faith, prayer, Christian growth, relationships, business, health and healing, and more, including church supplies. Make your selections and shop online today. Just go online to www.tbobic.org and click on Store. You can sow your seed into the ministry, and here are the three ways. On Facebook, found under our About section. Online at www.tbobic.org forward slash online underscore giving dot html or via mail at tbobic P.O. Box 825 Rocheron, Texas 77583. Thank you so much for giving. Join us for corporate communion every first Sunday of the month and let us break bread together. To get your Holy Communion, visit our store at www.tbobic.org and search for pre-filled communion cups and wafers. Just released by Pastor Tim, The Servant's Prosperity. In this simple but powerful book, you'll discover God's will to prosper you and the true purpose of prosperity. Get your copy of The Servant's Prosperity on Amazon today. Get ready, Macomb, Mississippi. Tim and Vicki will be at the Holy House of God Church Sunday, November 22nd at 10 a.m. for a Thanksgiving celebration. So meet us there. Welcome back, welcome back. Listen, I hope you got a pen and a paper. Pen and paper, because we're going to talk about uh, how to put what we've learned into action. Last week, we talked a little bit about vision uh, and, and that the whole world, world, world is about it will come. And just encouraging you that whatever you believe in God for, it will come. And, and that was the encouragement part. But now what we're going to do is we're going to put it to application. And we want to be more hands-on tonight and hold one another accountable. So I'm going to give you an exercise. I'm going to tell you why you need to do this exercise. Uh, because I believe this is going to be very vital. Uh, we're going to put some foot to our faith. Amen. So mm -hmm. what I want to do is, before we pray, I want to open it up with, a, with an encouragement and a testimony. Okay. An enc encouragement and testimony. So I'm going to tell the testimony first, and then we'll pray and we'll get into the lesson. Um, we want you to know that we pray hard for those that are connected with us, whether uh, those that view us on the broadcast and people that we're connected with. Every Saturday morning around 8 o'clock, we get together and we pray, and we pray for loved ones, family members, friends, even enemies. You know, we just cover everyone in prayer. We've been praying a lot about this election in, the, in our nation. Uh, we, we, we're trying to gather ourselves together, I think, after everything's over, and then we can get really strictly back to just focusing on prayer. Sometimes we have a little conversations and uh, go a little bit longer than I would like to go, but you know, <laughs> that's just the way it is. Uh, we have concerns that we discuss, but we're going to get more back to specific in prayer. And I believe when we start announcing and get more people to come in, that we can get people to begin to participate and be more strategic in praying for folks. But one of the things we do, we pray for loved ones. And all of us have challenges. Just because you see Vicki and I on here, don't think that we're above reproach from the adversary. More so us because if we're on the front line, we're going to be the first ones to be attacked. And so we're always praying for things. And, and so we've been praying for different family members, our family members. Mm -hmm. And one in particular we prayed for, and, and we asked him, is it all right to give his testimony? And he said it was okay. Uh, but I, 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 we had been praying for certain things, specific things. And, you know, if, if many of you out there have been praying, it seems like the more you pray, the worse things get, or it seems like it's never come in the past, and you continue to pray, and most of you can identify because even on our prayer line, we pray for things, and it seems like we're continuing to pray and pray and pray, and it seems like nothing is happening. And so, for some reason, I began to switch and start praying a different prayer. 
And I said, you know, and I said, uh, my Lord, my prayer is that something intervene or happens in his life that would get him excited about life. Something happens that would intervene that would get him excited. And when that, when we, when we changed that approach, it's just amazing how God quickly answered that prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of, mm-hmm. oh Lord, deliver from this, oh Lord, take him out of the Lord, let's save him from this end. And it's like, it was like hitting, you know, a brick wall. But then we begin to change and say, let's come at it from another approach. Let's talk about the things that do bring life. And, and, and it, is a, it is a verifiable fact that we as believers are supposed to win. I don't care who you are. Right. And just understanding what God has done and, and the things that he's manifested through that prayer and the answering of that prayer, it, it makes it very uh, understandable that a lot of people get in captivity, get in bondage because of discouragement, right. uh, defeat, because we are our father's creation and being like him, our father, he is his motive to create. God is a creator. Everything he does, he creates. Mm-hmm. And we have been built to be the same way. If you ever want to see somebody excited, give them something that they can create. You, this lady here, you give her something that in this house, home sweet home and decorating, she can go for hours and hours and hours. Baby, you're going to eat. Hours and hours out. Go to the store. Be gone from sun up to sundown because she's working on something that she's trying to create. And it's and it's with anybody. You wanna you wanna see a man thriving? Give him something to put his hands to that he can re- create. Amen. And that's with anybody. That's right. And and if we're in a place that we can't create anything or we're not being profitable, you see a lot of people just say, oh, he just lays it all. That there's a desire to want to do something, and when they can't do it, or when we can't do it, it just feel like we're being stagnated. Then here comes depression, discouragement, especially when you're trying your very hardest to win, right. and you keep losing on every hand. Eventually, depression comes in, discouragement, and all of a sudden, you just open open season for the enemy to come in and oppress you, and right. then you start feel like you don't want to do anything, and that leads from one thing to the yeah, other. And true. I always say that once a person loses their purpose, then the enemy can come in and do whatever he wants. And so the idea is just giving someone something that they can achieve. I always tell people, you're going to set goals, set goals that are reasonable and, and achievable. Because if you keep setting goals too high, you keep failing, guess what? Uh... Hope deferred make the heart sick, even failure, because constant mm-hmm. failure right. is going to disappoint you and discourage you and get to the point to where you don't want to do anything. And so my prayer is the same prayer for you and for your loved ones. Instead of just saying, Lord, get him out of this. Lord, save him from this. Lord, deliver him from this here. Let's change the thing. Let's, let's ask that God will give them something that will cause them to win and to be a winner. So I want to pray a winner's prayer tonight. For all of you and the loved ones, so if you've been believing God for something, you seem like it's not coming to pass, nothing has happened, I want to pray that something happens in your life, something intervenes, that it will cause you to win. And all, all it takes is one win. All it takes is one win to spark the life in you, and you can begin to live again, and then you can begin to see the creation. Because just that, just that one win, and I'll tell you what it was, it's, it's this idea of always keep trying to get a job. Get, get the job. And, and a lot of people can identify with this. Mm-hmm. You go apply for the job, you get right. turned down. You go apply for the promotion and get turned down. It's just you never seem to win. You never seem to get ahead. You try to start a business. You try to go for the loan and get turned down for the loan. You try to buy the house. Get turned down for buying the house. You try to buy a car. All you can buy is hammer downs. It just seems like you can't win. And all it takes is just one win to get you stirred up. And we see how God turned a lot of things around and just mm-hmm. put a glow back on his face with just one win. Yes. That's in that prayer. And Thank our you. prayer is that it will go from there to winning, winning, and winning. Listen, as a believer, we were yes. made to win. We're supposed to win. You better ask Joshua. When they went at the battle of Ai and they lost, Joshua ran his close and said, wait a minute, something's wrong. We always win. Mm-hmm. Say that with me. We always, we always win. win. And so I mm-hmm. want to pray that for your loved ones. So if you've been praying for God to deliver your son, your daughter, Let's switch the prayer and hit it in another angle Mm -hmm. and say, Lord, not only just send someone their way, but send something in their life that will spark passion. Give them something exciting. Give them something to live for, something to look forward to, something to put their hands to and say, I did that. I accomplished that. Me and the Lord, the Lord gave me power to do this. The Lord gave me strength to do this here. And then you'll begin to see life come back again. And what it does is it'll change things from them 
look into that to look into this. And so we want the this, that winning thing, that thing that's going to cause them to win. And so I want to pray that prayer first before we pray to open up our lesson. So keeping you in mind, yeah, we, we think about you all the time. We don't just think about ours. We're trying to figure out how we can get bombard heaven so that God can bring a breakthrough for your family as well. So, Father, in the name of Jesus yes, Christ of Nazareth, maybe we've been approaching this thing in prayer yes, the wrong way. Now we're asking God that your will be done, Lord, that you said you would give us the desires of our hearts. So, Lord, I'm praying right now that you would stir up a desire in the hearts of the loved ones that we are praying for, God. You know exactly what it takes and what they need, God, to be excited about life. Lord, that thing that will give them life, God, that thing that will stir them up, God, God, that thing that will cause them to be excited, the thing that will cause them to desire to wake up in the morning knowing that they can put their hands to it and that it will prosper. So, Lord, I'm praying right now that you would stir that desire up now. Now, and then, Lord, cause that desire to come to pass. I'm praying right now for a winning spirit, yes. God, for a winning momentum, God, in Thank Jesus' you, mighty name. Yes. That would this, just that one thing, God, that will cause them to win, that Thank will cause them to rise up and say, the Lord is with me. He causes me to triumph. The Lord has caused me to get this victory. And so, Lord, I give you praise. And so, Lord, with that one victory, Lord, that they'll begin to expand, God, their boundaries, expand their borders, expand their expectation to receive everything that you have for them and then give them the strength of God to say, you know what? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I am not a loser. I am not a failure. I am not defeated. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. And so I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Lord. And I pray right now, Lord, that they'll have that and do it for them in Jesus' name. Yes. Do it for that mother's son. Do Thank it for that mother's Jesus. daughter. Do it for that mother. Do it yes. for that woman's husband. Do it for that man's wife in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Do it for that one who's on the job, God, that's looking for that promotion, God. Do it for him in Jesus. Yes. Looking for that do business, for God. Him, God. Entrepreneur that's looking for that loan, God. Yes, Let the loan come Thank through you. in Jesus' mighty name. Let the new car Thank come, Lord. Let the home Jesus. come, God. Let that relationship be yes, restored, Lord. revived in Jesus', Jesus mighty name. Lord. We pray now for a winning, a yes. spirit of winning, yes. oh God, in the hearts of your people Thank tonight you, in Jesus' Thank mighty name. And now we do yes. bind the adversary who's always yes. walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour to thwart, oh God, and to snare the winning that you're going to cause to come to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. So we do bind him up now. In Jesus' mighty name, that, this, that the, those who we are praying for, those that we are setting before you, God, can have a season of winning, a season of winning, God, that they may be mature in that season, oh God, and be strong and fortified, God, to know that if you did it this time, you will continue to do it in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And I pray that prayer because I'm telling you, as soon as people start winning, the enemy want to come and snatch it from them. And if they hadn't been settled in that, 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 that experience of winning, he snatches that from them. Oh, my God. What can we say for them? They might be at a place that they can never recover. And so my prayer and your prayer is that there, 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 there will be a season of winning for the believer, yes. for that one that you're praying for. So yes. hear what I'm saying. Switch your prayer. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, Lord, deliver them from, Lord, yes. bring something to them that will cause Thank them to be excited Jesus. about yes, life. Lord. And then yes. let's, let's, and every time they get excited, yes, Lord. cheer for them, yes. lift them up, build them up, encourage them, uh, and just, just let them know that, hey, I see it. And like, and like I told my son, I said, man, when it looks good on you, mm -hmm. when it looks good, when it looks good on any believer. Mm -hmm. I'm telling, look at your neighbor and say, you know what? I'm going to call those things that be not to do. They were winning looks good on you. Winning, winning looks, looks good, good on you. Yeah. Winning to put a, look here, winning to put a smile on yeah. your face and a pep in your step. I know it will. Yeah. I'm telling you, it will. It's nothing like winning. You want to say that? So you, you, like, you like winning. I like winning. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> likes winning. Trust me. Everybody yeah, likes winning. I like the winning. And so my prayers for you is that you win. Mm -hmm. And everything you put your hands to, you win. And when you get used to it and it comes natural, then you just encourage somebody else and say, hey, you're a winner. So I declare and decree tonight that you yes, are Lord. a winner. Yeah. And Amen. God's going to bring that thing to pass. Amen. And so with that said, let's pray for this word. and that It will be a dynamic word. That it will be a word that will stick with you. And I know it's going to stick with you because I'm going to hold you accountable so that it does stick to you. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, we Lord. thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the awesome opportunity to always minister to your word of truth and life to your people, those that are watching, and those that will watch after, oh God. We pray right now that you will move by your spirit, touch the people, that this word may be effective in their life. The Lord that will cause them to bring fruit, yes, 160 and 34, in the mighty, majestic in the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, 
touch the people as only you can. For my words are just words, but your words got a spirit in life. And so we ask right now that you would just be the transforming power in the word to come forth and transform those that are hearing. Not only that they hear God, but they hearken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And we give you praise for it, and we count it done. We begin to praise you in advance for the glory and the yes, victory that you're going to give us through this Father. word. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. Name. amen. Now, we come around the book of Habakkuk, and Vic is going to read it, and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to focus on. Come on, look at your neighbors. I'm serious about this word. I'm, I'm serious, serious about, about this, this word. word. Serious about it. Uh, too often amen. we listen, Jesus. listen and listen. And tune in, and listen, mm-hmm. listen, listen. Right. But uh, we're gonna take it a little. We're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna walk it out. Mm-hmm. We're gonna walk it out. We're gonna. You're gonna. We talked about it. This time we're gonna walk it out. So if you just start reading, okay. Uh, starting at verse one, just okay. read it all the way through, and then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna tell you which ones we're focusing on. I will stand up on my watch, and set me up on the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and shall and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now, the verse I want you to focus on is verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain up on tables. Yes. Write the vision and make it plain up on tablets. If you got a tablet, I don't want you to write Write it down. Now, here's, here's my challenge to you. We're going to talk about some things. The, your assignment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, it's an assignment. If you love me, do, do you love us? Do you love us? Yeah. Okay. Do you, you think they love us? Yes. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to be obedient and do what we instruct you to do. We got some word for that to encourage you. And so if the Lord told us to do something, and I had challenged y'all last Sunday, and I said, okay, I'd be surprised at how many people wrote, wrote write, the, write the vision down. But you know what? That's not good enough for me. I want to see it in writing. So what I want to do is I want you to get you a pen and a piece of paper. I don't care if you get a croaker sack or a paper bag. I want you to get a pen and that piece of paper, mm-hmm. and we're going to write some things down. Mm-hmm. And we said that the vision is just the goal or whatever God is speaking to you or that desire that you have. Right. We're going to take it down and do some things about how we're going to get some scriptures because you got to have mm-hmm. something concerning the word of God. For it says, uh, uh, he is faithful and just, to, uh, yeah, I mean, um, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, which is his word, he heareth us, and if he if we know that he heareth us, then we have the petitions that we desire of him, and we will desire. You know what a petition is? A petition is something that is written that you bring before an orchestrate and say, listen, I, I, I need you to bring this to pass. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this here petition, and we're going to bring it before our magistrate, and we're going to, King Jesus, before the Father, and we're going to say, here are the things that we desire. Will you grant me this petition? And so it is very important that we write things down. And I say a lot of us won't receive anything because we won't write it down. And guess what? When you don't write anything down, you don't remember it. Yeah. You forget about it. And, and, and so how, how serious are you about the things that you believe in God for? Yeah. So what I want you to do is I want you to, that thing, start with just one. Remember, something that's achievable, something that you got enough faith to believe God for, write it down. If it's for healing, I want healing. And what specifically, what you want healing from. Then get two or three scriptures because the Bible said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is confirmed. See, it's it's not just enough to hear. Mm -hmm. We have to hearken. And so too many times we go to church and we hear, we hear, and we begin all types of instructions. The man and woman of God be telling you exactly what to do. And all we do is walk out of the place and say, man, that was a powerful word. If you don't get the tape, you definitely going to forget. And so the whole idea is, 
A lot of us don't pay attention to detail. Do you not know your deliverance can be in the obedience of the thing that you perform that you heard? Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Your deliverance can be in the obedience of the thing you perform of the thing which you heard. The man of God mm -hmm. may says, lift your hands and praise him. And do you not know? Just lifting yes, your hands and praising may be out of an act of obedience. Your healing is manifested. Yes, and so some of us is getting tired. And I, hey, if he tell me to lift my hands one more time, I'm walking up out of here. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Exercise your faith. Why don't you say, you know what? If he asks me to lift my hands one more time, Lord, I believe that's when you're going to heal me. Lift your head. Oh, there's going my healing. Yes. There's going my healing. <laughs> See, you got to use that thing and Amen. work it to your advantage. And so when yeah. I'm giving you some specific things to do, so I'm expecting you to do them. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with a little homework. Yeah. Matter yeah. of fact, it yeah. is for yeah. your benefit. So if the Lord says, write it down, don't you think we ought to what? Write it down. So he says, write the vision, what it is that you want, what I'm going to give, what I'm going to put that desire I'm going to burn in your heart mm -hmm. and make it plain. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, don't write stuff down there that you don't even understand. You come back and say, well, Man, what was I, what was I, what was I, what was I want? What in the world is this? What does this mean? <laughs> Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And he says, <laughs> when you write it down, make sure that you can understand it. Make it so plain that if somebody else read it, they can understand it. And that's when you know that it's plain. And so he says, write it down, make it plain up on tablets. Make it on tables, tablets. Like I said, I don't care if you get, go in there and get a Kroger, Kroger, Kroger bag write it down, and this is what I want you to do, specific instructions. Jerry, put that address up there. I want you to send it to tbobic dot tbobic P.O. Box 825, Rose Sharon, Texas 77583. You hear me? T-B-O-B-I-C P.O. Box 825, Rose Sharon, Texas 77583. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do anything that I haven't done. Can you get a close-up on this? So, I want him to get a close-up on this here as much as you can. See if he can put a little close-up on it. I want you to see this real good. It's a little delay on our end. Just slide it in, slide that okay. camera in. Can you slide it in? Yeah, okay. Now, this is me doing what I'm telling you to do. I believe I ought to be first fruits. I ought to believe I ought not be a hypocrite. One of the things we do have in churches, a lot of leaders are hypocrites. They tell you to do something, they don't do it. They tell you to give, and they won't give. They tell you to pray, and they won't pray. They tell you to stay, and they won't stay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you I've done my part, and I'm going to go all the way. Even though it's here at this house, I'm going to do everything I've told you to do. Mm -hmm. I've wrote it down. Mm -hmm. I've got me an envelope. And I'm going to send it to the P.O. Box. Yeah. The body of believers in Christ, P.O. Box 825, Rose Sharon, Texas, 77583. Yeah. I'm going to put it in here. After we pray, I'm going to pray over this too. This is what I'm going to believe God for. I know you're probably being nosy saying, what it is you believe in God for? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, it's, what it is. And so I'm going to do exactly what I, I'm, I'm going to do exactly what I'm telling you to do. Because we're going to do this thing together and we're going to win. Amen. Somebody say winners. 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 And so the whole idea is write the vision down, make it plain. What it is you believe in God for, get them two scriptures. Now, don't just send me your original copy. You keep the original copy, send me a copy. If you got to write it twice, write it twice, or you can take it to Office Depot, make a copy of it. Maybe you might have your own copy. Send me the copy. Right. Because I'm going to have it here to pray with it. Now, I know some of you might say, well, what's it to all of that? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. uh, let's read 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 5. Okay. Now, we're not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to read bits and pieces because you know the story. We want to talk about Naaman and the word that he got from the man of God. Tell him to do a specific thing. And, and we're going to deal with his attitude, and then we're going to deal with his correction, right. and we're going to deal with his obedience, and then we're going to see what God did when he was obedient. So we're going to start with verse 10, go to verse 11, and we're going to jump down to verse 13 and 14. So we're going to, we don't have that much time, so we're going to get to it. So Vicky's going to read verse 10. She, matter of fact, going to read the whole story, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. And Elijah sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth 
and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. And his servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do something, do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. So the man of God gave him specific instructions. Naaman didn't like what he heard because he thought he was better than that. And he went away mad. Guess what? He would have missed his blessing. But thank God there are some people that are rational that can hear God and say, wait a minute, that's got a hard thing to do. Mass father, father, listen, listen. Yeah. If he had told you to do a hard thing, you would have done that. But something as simple as going and washing him in the Jordan seven times, mm -hmm. and it got his attention. He said, you know what, I almost missed my blessing. How many of you going to almost miss your blessing? Because when I said write it down and send it in, you already got flipped. <laughs> <laughs> And what I got to do that for? The <laughs> idea is just obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Do you not know just the act of you doing exactly what I'm instructing you to do? Because I feel that God laid it for my heart. Well, that's what they're going to say. Yeah. The Lord know my heart. Ah, uh -uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what, what if, what if Naaman had to say, well, the Lord know my heart. I'm going to go out there and prove that I do it better. No, no, no. When he told, when he told Saul, utterly destroy all. And mm -hmm. Saul did what he wanted to do. What happened? He says, Saul, let me tell you, God ain't concerned about your sacrifices. He's concerned about being obedient. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are going to say, right. they, they, uh, the Lord know my heart, and they're mm -hmm. going to find out. He said, yeah, I knew your heart, and it was wicked, and I told you to change. Right. So don't, don't ever exactly. say that. Please right. don't say that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I admonish Christians. If you are a Christian, you're a born-again believer, that is not going to be an excuse for the thing mm -hmm. that God required for you. If God said, be right. holy, that, that he, the Lord know my heart, this is what he said about your heart. Mm -hmm. He says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speak. Right. So we don't want this coming out of your mouth. Be that we de declare that you're wicked. Mm -hmm. He says, with their lips, they profess that they know me, but in their works, they deny me. Mm -hmm. What's in your works? The works come from your heart. Right. So the idea, if you make that statement, then what you're literally saying is, my heart is revealed to God that I'm not right with God, but he mm -hmm. understands. The, you won't find that in scripture, so mm -hmm. please stop saying that. That is not in the book. Nope. Don't ever say anything that's not in the book. So that's something I don't even know how the enemy sold that in the church, but that's a living, and I'm taking it out right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's Amen. obedience. And so this is a simple thing, obedience. And I'm, I'm excited about it because mm -hmm. I just see that, that there is something that we need to do, the obedience. And here's another part. Mm -hmm. Let's go to James, the second chapter. This is going to solidify what we're doing tonight so we can be serious about it. And uh, I'm going to be shocked at those that will still not do it, but yet I murmur and complain what God is not doing. Mm -hmm. God ain't doing it. God ain't doing it. What well, did you do what the man of God asked you to do? I, ain't, I, don't, I don't believe in all that. Well, then, um, okay, you're going to be like Naaman. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had asked you to do a hard thing, thing, you'd have done that. Mm -hmm. If I was some preacher of him, I hear the Lord telling me, there's three of you out there that need to sow $1,500 in the Lord. You'd, <laughs> you'd be trying to find that $1,500. <laughs> I'm asking you to do something that's very simple. Very it don't simple. cost you anything but an ink pen, a piece of paper, and a, maybe a stamp. Yes, your faith. That you take your time to find out what it is that you desire from God and be specific mm -hmm. about it. Write it down. Make it plain so that you understand it. The angels understand yes. it. If anybody else read it, they understand it. And just a simple act of obedience. I don't care if you got to write it in crayons. Write it. Mm -hmm. Just show God that, you know what, Lord, I'm going to be obedient into what the man and woman of God is saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm believing that as I do these things, God, the things that I'm desiring, I'm going to win. And at the bottom of it, you can put the word winner. I'm out of, matter of fact, I'm going to put yes. on here on mine, winner. Yes. Yes. You see that? You see that? Winner. I'm planning on winning. Winner. Yes. 
I'm believing for some certain things, and I'm believing God's going to do it. And so you write it, fold it, put in the letter, put that address back up there again. You need to send it to, send that address again, Jaria address again, T-B-O-B-I-C, P.O. Box 825, Rose Sharon, Texas, 77583. Yes. You need to send that to there. Okay, I'm good. Uh, send it to that address. This is what I want you to write. What you believe in God for. So let me give you an example of what I did. I said, what am I believing God for? I'm believing God to expand the kingdom. Expand his kingdom by growing. See, right now we're in this media thing, social media, Facebook. I'm desiring to grow our ministry, our media ministry in, on YouTube. Right now we only have like three subscribers. That's not good. Mm-hmm. That's not good at all. Right now it just represents the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right now, we need, we need the body of Christ. <laughs> we need to add the body of Christ to that. Okay? So, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is getting a little lonely there, and we need mm-hmm. the body of Christ there. And Amen. so, we're believing That's God right. to add 300 subscribers a month, 300 souls. And so, how am I going to do this here? Uh, we have been awarded a $10,000 grant from Google for advertising. Can't do nothing with it but for advertising. Now, I'm going to tell you what my heart desire is. My heart desire is to get that and not just uh, 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 promote our church. I want to take that other small ministries and say, hey, listen, mm-hmm. you want to get your name out there? I, I got the advertising. I know how mm-hmm. to do it. If you don't mind, we can take your church and your ministry and promote it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be stingy because this is what I understand. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. And we have a God who says, Timothy, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So I don't have time to compete with anybody and try to be better than anybody and belittle anybody and stop other people from being blessed. Because I know it's more blessed to give than receive. And so the more I build up my blessings down here, God is storing up my blessings in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not a jealous preacher. I will, I will cheer for the next person. I'm not That's trying right. to compete. And so my heart's desire is we, we, we started a Facebook page called Growing Ministries. The idea of seeing other ministries grow. I, I don't understand it that we can compete. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to take that because $10,000 is a lot of money for advertising. We can't do anything else with it but for advertising. We don't get to cash it in and put yeah. it in our pocket. It's got to be done specifically right. for advertising. And you know what? It's not that they got to be all about us. The idea of taking that little small ministry who don't have anybody, don't have any exposure, mm-hmm. and say, listen, That's let right. us help you out. Expose you on YouTube, and then, then that can go to Facebook and just build yes. you up. So, so it's all about working together. Mm-hmm. And so take that grant, build us up, build you up. Then create meaningful content that will motivate people. We have things called mm-hmm. motivational moments where we be encouraged people with the word of God, get them excited, get it out there. Like, who is this body of believers? Wow, this stuff there sounds pretty good. I, you know, I was going through the day, starting my day all jacked up, messed up, mm-hmm. ticked off. <laughs> and then I heard this word saying, the vision speaks when you speak the vision. I say, man, you know what? That's my problem. I ain't been speaking the vision. So my mm-hmm. vision hadn't been speaking. Things like that that will motivate people. And then they'll start coming and subscribing. So we believe in God that they will subscribe and come hear the word. Mm-hmm. And if they're lost, they'll get saved and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they're sick, they'll hear the word of faith and be right. healed. And Amen. so we want to promote that seven days. And just those are the things that we're going to do. That's, that's the plan of action for the vision that we have. And so here are my mm-hmm. scripture bases. Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So I want to go into YouTube, that's part of the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. I don't care if they yes. Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, right. atheist, they're going to hear this here. Right. Some of them might turn off. Some of them may, some of them may hear that word at the nick of time. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. When you got your right. back up against the wall and you are desperate for something that will cause mm-hmm. you to see the light, right. that word will be there right there at the nick of time. Mm-hmm. Second scripture, out of my two or three witnesses, Proverbs eleven thirty. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. A lot of people stand away from media, saying, "Oh no, I'm not into all that technology." But listen here, the Bible says, "He that winneth souls is wise," and you got to get on every vehicle that is that is necessary. The world on it, and the world is working it. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, the world is working. You know, I, I see people watch this here. All that mystical stuff that's supposed to be religious and spiritual. 
They can say anything and do anything, sell garments, sell trinkets, and nobody says a thing and get rich off of it. But the church can't do anything. The devil is alive. We coming through mm -hmm. YouTube and we coming like gangbusters and we're going to let the world know that Jesus is That's alive right. yes. and well. Amen. And he does heal, he does deliver, and mm -hmm. he does set free. Right. My third witness is Matthew 4, 16, and he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So we're going to be casting that net, baby, and ridding the men. So you yeah. pray with us and pray for us Amen. that God will bring this thing yes, to pass Lord. that we can expand the kingdom. So Pastor Tim going to fold it up, lick that envelope, seal it, and mail it in come Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And mine is going to be on the way. What yes. about yours? Mine is going to be on the mm -hmm. way. What about yours? So what I need you to do is last Sunday we said inquire of God and see what he's going to say to you. And when he reprove you mm -hmm. and say, no, you've been saying the wrong things. What right. you should have been saying is instead of saying, Lord, why am I going through all this yes. H E L L? He says, No, wait, wait. He said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Yea, do I walk through the battle, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He says, yes. My wisdom is saying the wrong thing. But see, what you need to do is, what is it that you want? What do you want from me? Well, I want to now write it down. Oh, look, what? Uh, see, that's what yes. I thought. Write it down. And then when you write it down, make it plain, mm -hmm. give it some thought. Right. This is how you make it plain. Give some thought. You go find Details. some scriptures. Yeah. Specifics. You go find some scriptures that 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 that's, that justifies a promise that you can receive. That mm -hmm. if you can't find it, you need to dig a little deeper. Find them scriptures that that that, that justifies that it's a promise that's a yeah and amen. Mm -hmm. You write that down. Right. And then you send it in to us, and we put it with mine, and we put it with ours. And we pray over it, and every now and then I'm going to pull that out and say, hey, 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 you, call you by name. Uh, you still working on that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, go get it, <laughs> dust it off, and read it. Read it in the morning. Read it, read it at it. night. Keep your focus. Keep it, keep it up, because keep if you don't, track. you're not going to run. Mm -hmm. He says, make, write it down, make it plain. And it, now, see, that's simple. That is very simple. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Let's read, let's read James, and, and this, is, this tells you what you're doing. This is what you're doing when you do all this. Read James. Let's go. James 2, verses 14. We're going to jump around because James is talking a lot of stuff. We can't read all. We don't have enough time to read everything James said. We just got a short time. But, okay. So we're going to grab you about five scriptures, what James said. But I think you'll get the whole point when he gets finished. So 14. Mm -hmm. What does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So I'm can, I can be telling you what the Lord is going to do. You can say, yeah, I believe I received. And James said, that ain't good enough. He said, you got to have some faith, faith. with your works. Yes. In other words, he said, you got to put some foot to, feet to your faith. And so he says, faith without works is dead. So what I am endeavoring you to do and challenging you to do is the works, baby. Mm -hmm. Put some works to that faith. So now whatever you believe in God for, yes. you wrote it down. This is what I'm believing God for. Now, mm -hmm. when you do this, this is the activation of your faith. You are acting on what you believe. Mm -hmm. I ain't actually for no money. I ain't actually for no offering. I ain't actually for a dime. All I actually for is your time. Take a little time <laughs> to write this out. Make it plain. Think about it. Consider it. Don't yeah. just write something down. Something that, that is really a desire in your heart. And get ready to win. Mm -hmm. Mail it again. Show that address one more time. <laughs> T B O B I C, P O Box eight two five, Rose Sharon, Texas seven seven five eight three. I am expecting your letter. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be looking for it every day, and I'm gonna see how many people are gonna be obedient. And I don't want to say, Lord, what we gonna do? We get bombarded by so many people wanting so many things. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe they want it bad enough. I'm shocked. Don't let me be shocked. Don't let me be surprised. Let me be saying, man, I, see, I knew she was going to say that. 
I was expecting him to send that. I just knew brother so-and-so was going to do that. I just knew mm -hmm. so-and-so was going to do that because they are serious about what they believe in God for. Yes. Other than that, we're just going through the motion of being religious. And I think the enemy, sometimes you lose so often, you just expect to lose mm -hmm. and just go through the motion. That devil is a lie, and right. that is too. Amen. No more just going through the motion and doing things mm -hmm. to be doing things. We expect to win. Yes, I have never been a preacher, even when I was pastoring, that liked people to come up to me and say, Ooh, I sure did enjoy that message. Mm -hmm. I've been and I, I try not to be sarcastic. I'm like, what you gonna do with it? Don't <laughs> don't tell me what you <laughs> show me you enjoy. How can yeah. how can I show you I enjoy when I see the word being manifested in your life? Amen. Whatever I just got yes, through teaching Lord. you, I can turn around and see it next Sunday on you. I see it. Mm -hmm. I see it. I want to see the word on you. Yes, I want to see the word good in you. you. Oh my God. So, I'm expecting letter after letter, and, and we ain't going to tell everybody. So, if it's something that's confidential, mm -hmm. we will be secret about it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be nobody but just me and her. We'll pray over it, right. because we have your best interest at heart like the Father do. And I'm going to tell you a secret. I know how much God loves his people. And he ain't put no shenanigans over right. there. That's right. We don't play games with people's lives and people's souls. Mm -hmm. God is serious about his babies. And he, matter of fact, Jesus said this here. He said, it'd be better that you tie a millstone around your neck and yes, be cast into the Lord. sea for you miss one of these. Yes. That is just how much he loves you and how much he's concerned about you. Mm -hmm. Woe unto the pastors that scatter my flock. He's concerned about his people. We, he, we cannot put our hands on you or do anything that's destructive. To, to hurt you or harm you. So our desire is to, to, to be there for you and to pray and to make sure that whatever you believe in God for, we sincerely desire for it to come to pass right. in the mighty name of Jesus. So with all that said, we're expecting you to write it down, expecting you to make it plain up on that piece of paper mm -hmm. and sign it. <laughs> like you say, you can put win on that. You can say, I'm winner. I can do all things. Whatever your favorite saying is, put it on there. To put your hands on, declare and decree. You can put some anointing uh, oil on there. It can come in that greasy. It don't make any difference, just as long as it yes. gets here. Uh, be like, what's that? Uh, Aletha Adams? Don't, don't, just don't, as long as it gets just here. As long as it gets here. I don't care how you get here. Yeah. Just as long as it gets here. So, you so got that, something you want to no, say? I just wanted to say the inspired word, wisdom, the written word by the unction of the Holy Ghost. So, God, He made it plain. Mm hmm. He made it plain. He made it plain. Mm -hmm. it's, it is written. Yes. <laughs> and guess what? It it's for is you. written. It's for us and it's written. So who, who that he that read it may do what? Run. And we can run well because not just run, written. run run well. Well, yeah. Run well. What does run well mean? Run yeah. to win. Mm -hmm. Paul said, Don't nobody don't nobody run no race to lose. Yeah. Every man run the race to win. Right. And so we're gonna put winning back in your spirit. Winning back in your step. And so the idea is that, you know, I, I, and listen to me very because we get ready to close. This is, it's, it's just thinking about this. You know, Lord, we just can't just keep listening. We got to do something. Mm -hmm. And something as simple as this here, I believe that just writing it down, making it plain. Because the, if, if, if the Father say do it, then I believe that there's, mm -hmm. there's a key to it. Right. I believe that there's an answer. And I believe a lot of us hadn't received because we just hadn't been obedient. Mm -hmm. When the word comes, oh, I got a vision. What is it? Well, you see, and every time I ask you about your vision, it changes. Yeah. See, if you write it down, it won't have to change. What you believe in God for? Well, I'm believing him for healing. <laughs> well, I'm believing him for finances. You, see, you know, every time I ask you about your vision, or whatever, it is, whatever it is that you believe in God for, it keeps changing. Mm -hmm. Write it down, make it plain, so you can stop being double-minded and unstable. Because he said, a double-minded right. man is unstable in all his ways. Then that man think that he should receive anything. anything. When you right. write it down, make it plain, it always yes. say, uh-uh, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Stick yes. to the plan. Stick to the plan, and the plan yes. will stick with you. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do. And then you get up, and you're going to let, the, he said, the vision will speak. The vision will speak when you speak the vision. He says, wait for it. Do it tarry? It will not tarry. It will come, come to, to pass. pass. Mm -hmm. Surely. It will surely Surely. come to pass. Mm -hmm. And so, well, it ain't been coming to pass. Oh, let's go back and figure out what it was we did wrong. Uh, could it be possible that 
You didn't write it down? Could it be possible that it wasn't planned? So who can run with it? Mm -hmm. I can't read your mind. <laughs> the angels can't read your mind. Only God can. So That's we right. just write it down and make it plain. And I am challenging all of my beloveds that are out there yes. that tunes Amen. in every Sunday to listen to us and say, you know what? Now it's time for you to participate and do what you need to do mm -hmm. to see this thing come to pass. We're going to pray, and then we're going to get ready for our communion. Amen? Yes. And solidify what we believe in God for. So, Lord, we thank you for this word tonight. Yes, Lord. To thank write you, it down yes, and to Lord. put it in writing. Thank and then, Lord, I pray right now for those that are listening. I pray, Lord, for a heart of obedience thank you. to offer up a free willingness, God, to obey the word. Just grab a pen and a piece of paper, write that thing down that they're desiring and believing you for. Yes. Add the steps and the plans, oh God, that will orchestrate that to come to pass that they believe. Some may say, well, I'm believing you for healing. And then you got a scripture, thou the Lord thy God that healeth me. Yes. By his stripes I am healed. And then my plan of action is I'm going to read those things three times a day. I'm going to read them seven times a day. Maybe I'm going to read them morning and night. Just my plan of action to see that thing come to pass every day. Keep that before me as my vision. And to speak the vision that the vision may speak. And I believe it to pass. And then there may be some that say, I'm believing for a financial breakthrough. And they might say, I wish above all that the Lord, that, that I would profit and be in health. That God is my, my provider. I was young, young now, I'm old, never yes, have I seen the righteous forsaken, I see big and bread. Yes. And what am I going to do? Oh, okay, Lord, I'm going to be that mm -hmm. one to give, and it shall be given to me good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Lord, I shall step out, oh God, in faith. I don't have enough to tithe right now, but Lord, I'll store where I'm at, God. Just those things. That's my plan of action. And you write it down. And then, Lord, to pray over it. And then when it gets to us, we'll pray over it. So, Lord, I pray right now. Put a spirit of obedience in your people, Lord, just to activate their faith. For faith without works is dead, yes. yet being alone. And then, Lord, I'm asking you yes. to watch over that, God. So, God, as they write and they send it in, I pray, Lord, that that, that, that obedience, God, be that, God, faith that is being released, faith that is put into action, that that which they're believing for, we join our faith together when we receive it. When I receive it in my hand, we count it done, and we count it God being manifested in Jesus' name in we Jesus pray, name. and we give you all the glory and honor. Yes, Amen. Amen. We count Amen. that thing done. You, now, you, let's Jesus. just yeah. thank God for it. Can we praise God for that? Well, we just mm -hmm. praise you for that right yes, now in Jesus' Lord. name. Jesus. We're thank expecting you. with great expectation yes. of God for a great participation of yes, your people, Lord. Lord, to do for everyone that hears this yes. message and hear this yes. teaching, God, that there'll be a great participation and they'll believe you for it in Jesus' mighty in Jesus name. Remember, name. if I had to act something hard, it would have been easy to do. Amen. It's very easy to do. Yes. So now if you, if you have your communion, if you don't, you know, you ought to have something by now. Uh, you want to participate in this, I mean, you'll be all right. You didn't see that. <laughs> we don't want to disrespect the Lord, but he says, Lord, to move this out the way. Move, move my homework out the way. I don't want anything to get on my homework. Might get a little juice on it. Move the homework out the way. Move the lesson out the way. And let's get serious about the Lord's Supper. Now, communion is very vital to the believer. Uh, Paul says some of us, when we do it unworthily, you know, we bring damnation to ourselves, and, and we don't realize how powerful it is. Now, if you're looking for, we did an in-depth teaching one Sunday back mm -hmm. in September the 13th. I'll never forget that day. September the 13th. And you can go back and look on that day, and you can find the in-depth teaching. Uh, but I want to take it a little further, because there's something that Paul said that we didn't focus that much on last Sunday, but we're mm -hmm. going to focus on this, this Sunday, and that is discerning the Lord's body. Mm -hmm. And so... Vicky is going to read, and then I'm going to bring some readings up that I want to just share with you concerning the Lord's Supper. Okay. So, if you start with, we're in 1 Corinthians. We're talking about the communion now. We've, we've moved from the homework assignment and writing it, write, write it, write it down, um, put it in writing. Now we're mm -hmm. talking about the communion. We're going to come together every first Sunday. Yes. We're going to come together and share and break it together. And he says, as often as you do this, you do show remembrance of me until I come. So okay. we had 1 Corinthians, so just bear with us. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, and we didn't read the part because there's a lot of teaching that Paul was doing. He was really addressing the church. But he says, some of you are coming here, you're getting full off the food and drunk on the wine. And he says, you shouldn't be doing the wine. You know, eat at your own house. And just really some things he was dealing with the Corinthian church. But then there was one part where he said, talked about discerning the Lord's body. And I'll read this here. 1 Corinthians 11, 29 and 30. He says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Not just the idea they was taking it wrong. Oh, they got sick because they was taking it wrong. That could be the case too, but the idea of you know, what was causing them to be sick, because if you never took the communion, just not understanding this one part, you're still going to be sick and many die. Mm -hmm. Not discerning or understanding the Lord's body. What is the purpose of the Lord's body? Why did God send his son to down the cross? Not just for the remissions of your sin, but for the healing of the nation. Mm -hmm. He was Think about it. He was whipped at the whipping post and procured our healing at that moment. So he he purchased our healing before he purchased our salvation. Right. And a lot of people don't understand and realize that. And so Paul says, if you don't understand that, if you hadn't recognized that or received that, discerned that, he says, that's why you, you're, you're, you're sick and many die because you don't realize that you have a right. And so that when you get sick, then there's healing for your body. Your yes. physical body, not just for your physical soul. And so, so many people would get discouraged with healing that we say, oh, the Lord, that, that's passed away. He's just talking about your soul. We so often try to have uh, what they call apologetics to try to, to apologize for what God is doing or not doing. And God doesn't need any justification or needs anybody to explain why he's doing and what he's not doing. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter, a lot of us are going to get dealt with because he's going to say, no, did I tell you to do that? Then I give you the power and the authority. Now, tweet, I'll be working with you. And so the idea is right. we have to get to back to the place of discerning the Lord's body. So I want, I, want to, I want to share something with you that Jesus said, and he made it plain. Mm -hmm. So what did he say would happen if you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood? Because Jesus made this statement. He, and when he made this statement, a lot of people left him. He says, you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And a lot of people say, well, how are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. And so when he made this statement, a lot of people walked away from him. He says, if you don't eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you are not one with me. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he says in John 6, 56 and 57. And we're going to prepare our hearts to receive the communion. He says, listen to this, John 6, verse 56 and 57. He says, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me even shall even he shall live by me. So just partaking of him and understand. When he says eating, he's talking about to spiritually understand who he is. And this is just a representation to give you an example of what that means to eat of him physically. Then that which you say spiritually understanding. Wait a minute. He died. So I'm, I'm part in part with him. He is one. He prayed that we would be one with him and the father. Yes. So he says, just as I live by the life of the Father, now mm -hmm. you live by the life of me. And right. so this is his life. He says, my bread is life. And so as we eat of it, you have to really understand. Now, I'm just not doing some ritual. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding that literally, physically, spiritually, yes. mentally, emotionally, he died for me. And everything that I need, whether it's tangible, intangible, physical, spiritual, it belongs to me. Mm -hmm. All of these things, he said, all right. these things are yours. The world is yours. Mm -hmm. Everything is yours. So as we partake of the communion, let's discern his body that was broken and bruised for us. Mm -hmm. The chest has of peace laid upon him, yes. and with his stripes ye were healed. Mm -hmm. And so healing belongs to you because of his body being broken and bruised. Yes. Salvation belongs to you because his mm -hmm. blood was shed. Yes. So we do. 
do as he did on that night. Take that bread. And I want you to see it now and symbolize it as you being the priest and take that bread and break it. Give thanks for it. Thank Lord, we thank you for thank your body that was broken and bruised for us. Yes. The chastisement of our peace being laid up on you. Yes. And Lord, as we thank, thank you, give thanks for this, yes. thank you. we bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus and pray over it for the sanctity and the healing of our body from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Yes, we discern your body that procured healing for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Amen. Amen. Take and eat. Now, taking this cup, as often as you drink of this, you do show the remembrance of me until I come. We understand that this fruit of the vine represents his blood that was shed for the remissions of your sin. Not only to take away the sin, but to take away the consciousness of sin. Paul said bulls, goats and bullocks couldn't do that. For every time they had to give a sacrifice year by year, people were brought back to the remembrance of sin, was reminded of the sins. That they did. Every time somebody got to do something for you, have you ever had an argument with somebody? And then y'all forgive one another, and then you have another argument, and they bring back up the old stuff, and it brings back up old wounds and old hurts. Right. And it's like, it keeps bringing, why do you keep reminding me? God says, the powerful blood of Jesus takes away the remembrance of sin. It starts with God first. He says, I will cast your sins into the sea of forgiveness, and I will remember them no more. So when the devil goes to accuse you of what you've done, God yes. says, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I remember that. I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. So now what he says is now for you, seeing that the father doesn't remember that thing, now you take it from your consciousness. You notice what he said? He says if, you, right. if, you, if you're faithful to forgive, ask for forgiveness of your sins and repent of it, he is faithful to, he is faithful and just to forgive yes. and Thank to cleanse you. from Amen. all unrighteousness, yes. even your conscience. That's right. That's how powerful the blood is. So when you put it under That's the blood, right. can't nobody touch it. So why are you touching it? Don't touch it again. So with that, Father, we thank you right now and give thanks for this cup, yes, which Lord. represents your blood that was shed for us. Yes, Lord, as the blood came out of your side, out of the open wounds in your hands and your feet, the brow of your head, oh God, with the thorns, all of those things were shed for the sanctity of our mind, the healing of our hearts, God, sanctifying our hands and our feet. We thank you, Lord, that that blood now sanctifies yes. us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness and delivers us from all sin, yes. redeeming our soul. Yes. And that right now, Lord, we have eternal life. Thank you. This, oh God, who partake of it, makes us one with you and you one with us. Yes. And now we live by the life that is by you. We take this cup, God, and thank you for it in advance. Yes. In Jesus' name in we Jesus pray. Name. Amen. Amen. Take and drink. Now, Lord, we just thank you that you loved us enough to send your son. So you said in your word that you love the world so much that you gave us your only begotten son that whosoever will believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. And, Lord, I thank you for everyone that has partaken the thank communion tonight. Jesus. I pray a blessing over them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Yes. Healed in Jesus' name. Delivered in Jesus' name. Yes. Saved by the blood of Jesus. Delivered prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus name and we of thank Jesus. you for it Lord and we remember you tonight what you've done yes. what you're doing and what you're going to do yes. and we honor you with all of our hearts in Jesus name we pray name. Amen. amen we'll be right back amen. after these announcements amen. get connected have you recently joined our broadcast maybe you've just started tuning in but don't know the next steps whether you're new or have been with us for a while, you may not know all the ways you can connect with us to stay up to date with what's going on in the ministry. Here are just a few ways you can get connected. Connect with us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash T-B-O-B-I-C Houston. Here you can like and follow us to get all future notifications. Just click the like button, then the three dots to the right to follow. Yes, we are on YouTube, where all of our messages are stored free for all to enjoy. 
Just search for The Body of Believers in Christ. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get your notifications when we drop fresh manna from heaven. Last but not least, you can find us on the web at www.tbobic.org. Here you can find out more about us, who we are, and what we believe. You can also get the opportunity to get connected by becoming an online member by registering online. Just know that we're here for you in more ways than one. While visiting online, stop by our online store, your one-stop destination for quality, inspirational resources and wisdom tools to help keep your faith alive and your spirit energized. Shop from our large online selection of books on faith, prayer, Christian growth, relationships, business, health and healing, and more, including church supplies. Make your selections and shop online today. Just go online to www.tbobic.org and click on Store. You can sow your seed into the ministry, and here are the three ways. On Facebook, found under our About section. Online at www.tbobic.org forward slash online underscore giving dot html or via mail at tbobic P.O. Box 825 Rocheron, Texas 77583. Thank you so much for giving. Join us for corporate communion every first Sunday of the month and let us break bread together. To get your Holy Communion, visit our store at www.tbobic.org and search for pre-filled communion cups and wafers. Just released by Pastor Tim, The Servant's Prosperity. In this simple but powerful book, you'll discover God's will to prosper you and the true purpose of prosperity. Get your copy of The Servant's Prosperity on Amazon today. Get ready, Macomb, Mississippi. Tim and Vicki will be at the Holy House of God Church Sunday, November 22nd at 10 a.m. for a Thanksgiving celebration. So meet us there. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Listen, we want to we want to thank you for sticking out with us a little, a little longer than necessary. But I think it's necessary. I don't know about you. I enjoy taking the communion. I mean, the Lord always does something when we do that. And it's, and it's always good to, to partake breaking bread together because he says as often as we do it, and I trust nobody was offended, but as often as we do it, we do show remembrance of him. And I, when we take the communion, I'm literally trying to see in the spirit you get receiving healing. I don't care what it is. Right. Physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and receive that healing. So we believe we receive. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited about seeing all the letters that's going to come in, hit that P.O. box. Because we've been, we've been having that box for a while. We've been looking for some mail to come through. We get some mail. We're looking for some mail that's going to cause us to be a winner. I'm excited about coming to Macomb, Mississippi. Macomb, Macomb, are you excited? Let me see the hearts and the likes. Let me see it. all of you that's in Macomb. Let me see the hearts and the likes and let us know that you're excited that we're coming. Yeah. Amen. And how many are you excited about being a winner? Amen. I'm mailing my That's thing right. in the morning. I'm putting it on there in the morning. You are, you you gonna write yours down? Yes. Send it in too. Yes, sir. Look at that. Winner. Winner. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. Mm -hmm. So don't be a quitter. Don't quit on me. Right. I want you to be obedient and write it. And listen here. You ain't too big. I, I might have I, I might have some preachers on there. You, you know, you, you know us preachers feel like we don't have to do anything. Then come to the altar. I'm a preacher. I don't come to the altar. We don't do, do your best. So, so I, if you're a man or woman of God, you'll be surprised that yes, we can be obedient too. Because I'm telling you, I, I do. Somebody asked me to do something. Like, you know what? I believe that's a word from the Lord. I'm gonna use that, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I, I'll be obedient to act upon it because the, the Holy Ghost always act. I was using you. Ain't, you ain't you ain't high and mighty. Mm -hmm. That's for you too. Right. So that's for all of us. See that? I'm telling you, I did the, me, a man of God, I did my part. See, I, be, I obey the word. Mm -hmm. I believe in obeying right. the word. So, anybody's be telling you to do something, I mm -hmm. don't do it. That would make me what? A hypocrite. hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So, we did it there. Listen, I want to give a shout out to Minister Jackie Foreman for his glory. 
uh, Christian Alliance, mm -hmm. she finally, I felt kind of embarrassed. I finally got a chance to be on her radio show uh, and I didn't want to feel like an opportunist because that's yeah. definitely not what I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had been promising her, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna get that. She tried to give me that for that saxophone. What's well, something about that saxophone? Mm -hmm. I was just, just not, just, just kind of shy about that. Really shy about this here too. But it's like she kind of put up, it, it's like she told me I was gonna do it this time. <laughs> But she invited me in on that. I think we had a wonderful mm -hmm. time. And um, I'm so humble because I got the autograph too. And I'm like, what? Autograph a book? And it's not special about, you know, being autographed. I heard TDJ say something in, in, in the wrong way with me. Nobody, and I'm like him, you don't look for fame. You just look to be relevant and effective. Mm -hmm. And so right. my prayer is that our ministry is relevant and effective. Uh, I, I, when we say we're praying mm -hmm. that you get delivered, pray that you get healed, right. pray that you prosper, that is our heart's desire. Mm -hmm. Even what you're seeing right now, I'll tell you how we think. Even putting this production together here, you know how I think? I don't think, wow, we're going to outdo everybody. Let me show you something. Let me show you what our heart is. Wow, we're going to outdo all the missions. Ain't nobody doing it like we're doing it. No. Our heart desire is when we learn how to do it, we're going to show other people how to do it. So I'm excited about anybody else that's looking and says, you can't listen to the word because you're trying to listen to what we're looking at what we're doing. Be excited about it because I tell you what, if we can help you to do it, we're going to reveal to you how to do it and show other ministers how to do it because guess what? The Lord sees us. Yes, he does. And he's watching me. And if, if I have any, any malice in my heart or competitiveness in my heart, God sees that. And he says, you will never hear the rascal you. Then I tell you to give. Then I tell you to bless. And so why are you being stingy and selfish? Show my people how to prosper mm -hmm. in every area. And so, you know, you got, you got church folk won't show you nothing, won't tell you how they did mm -hmm. anything, how they do anything. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I prayed about it. I, yeah, yeah, and after you prayed, what you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. What, after you prayed about it, what did you do? There was something you did to make it work. And so we, if, if, if it's something that we can show you, we're going to show you. So if, you, if, you, if you're in the ministry and you're excited about how we're doing these things, we'll be definitely glad to sit down with you and share with you how we do it. It's easy. Anybody can do it. Only costs you a little money. And I'm telling you, you can have you know, that quality. Because I know the hearts of a lot of men and women of God. They believe in the spirit of excellence. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that everything we do for God, it should be in a spirit of excellence. And that's what we strive for. And we are endeavoring to expand God's kingdom through every vehicle necessary and media. So if we're going to do it, might as well do it right. And so we hope that this has been an enjoyment to you, that you can receive the word, and that as we come to you, it makes you happy. It makes you excited. It challenges you. Mm -hmm. It reproves you. Right. It corrects you. That even when we pull out the strap and get swinging, swack, 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 <laughs> you, feel the, you see the light, but you don't feel the heat. And right. it draws you closer to God. Right. Yes, we talk about holiness. Yes, we talk about getting right with God. But it, it, we come to you out a way to say, hey, you can do it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And it's good to serve the Lord. But without holiness, no man shall see God. Right. That is the truth. And there's no way to sugarcoat it. And you know what? His commandments are not grievous. No, they're not. If you love him, you keep his commandments. Right. Ain't nothing hard about that. Just got to put their flesh in the subjection, and it's worth it. It's worth it, I'm telling you. Living life, living a clean life, it is. And, um, and every now and then you got to put the flesh in the subjection, but it can be done through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So yeah. if you hadn't got a book yet, do go to Amazon and search for uh, The Servant's Prosperity. We talk about the true, the true purpose of prosperity. Yeah, I, think it'll, I think it's a book that will bless you. It's a very short book, uh, very practical. Got some few scriptures in there for you to study and go by. And I believe that once you understand God's ulterior purpose for prospering you, you'll see that you're prospering. Remember, it's, it's relative. Everybody's not going to be a billionaire. You know, some of us don't need to be one. But God wants to prosper you in everything you do. Not with just money, but in your mind, your heart, your soul, and your relationships and everything. Amen. We've gone well over our time, but we want you to know we love you and we'll continue to pray for you. And what we're going to do, we're going to send that letter in, amen? Mm -hmm. And we're looking for it. So we're just looking to get our hands on it. We're eager to look over what this and believe God for you. And one chase a thousand flight to 10,000. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Amen.